Well, there it is. Hey, this is Witty, and welcome to my Undead Build Order video guide for Warcraft 3. I shall be showing you two build orders for Undead. The first one is going to be Ghouls and Gargs, and then afterwards I will be showing you the Death Knight, Lich, Fiends, Statues and Frostworms build. Now, as I go through these build orders, I will be showing you points where you might want to differ because you might be first is a different race composition or you might want to do it slightly different you might want to go towards a different tech route I shall be pointing these things out as we go through and I will mention that the replays will be in the brief description both of them so you will probably want to download those and watch those to see exactly how I played this through and of course you might want to watch this video guide that way you'll get a better inclination of what it is you need to do to perform these strategies. Now the first one is going to be Ghouls and Gargs. So we start off the game sending our three acolytes to the gold mine and the ghoul to the wood. Then we're going to get ourselves an acolyte from the necropolis, rally it to the gold mine. With one of the acolytes that you currently have in your possession you are going to build yourself a crypt and then following that crypt an altar. Then return to the gold mine. So you're going to stay at four acolytes for the moment, and then get yourself a cigarette. Then you're going to produce an acolyte when able to. So here comes your fifth acolyte. And then shortly afterwards, as soon as you can, afford another acolyte. So you're going to be heading for six acolytes in total. So you've got five in the gold mine, and a sixth one is currently building. He's going to be rallying just slightly north, and he's going to build a Tome of Relics. There he goes, and off he goes to scout as well. Meanwhile, you're going to build yourself a ghoul with your crypt and your other ghoul that has just brought in 50 wood, which is enough to get yourself another cigarette, is going to go off and scout. This way you can find out where your opponent is on maps like Twisted Meadows. In 1 versus 1, it's a bit more obvious um, on certain maps, you know, Tyrannus Stand or Echo Isles. You're probably going to know where your opponent is, but this um, is more or less roughly based on Twisted Meadows, but it isn't strictly limited to Twisted Meadows. You may want to differ how you do things on different maps. But anyway, if it's a four player map like this, you're going to send off an acolyte to scout one direction north and a ghoul to scout the other direction once you've brought in that last bit of wood to bring yourself to 50 wood at this point. And your crypt is going to be rallying that ghoul to the wood. So once this cigarette is finished, we're going to get ourselves um, a death knight. I will just point, the, uh, point out that if you were first is undead, this is for Undead versus Night Elf mostly, okay, this build. But if you were versus Undead, you would probably want to get yourself a Lich first. Because that is just pretty much the standard in Undead versus Undead. However, play exactly how you want to play. But Death Knight is um, definitely a very strong hero, and you will want him versus Night Elf, which my opponent is. Frisky Computer Normal. So. Let's have a look. Crypt is going, Time of Relics is going, Acolyte is scouting. Now typically I like to scout around this way and then you'll see what I mean. Now the ghoul just pointing out here whilst I was playing is he's going to point out to you the pig. This is something you want to bear in mind that when you're scouting you want to be looking for any critters because essentially what you're trying to do here with this build is you're going to harass with the death knight early on. So you're going to want to kill any critters on the way towards an enemy base wherever they may be stationed and then basically um, use their corpse to get yourself two skeleton warriors with the skeletal rod from your tome of relics. So whilst you're scouting and your ghoul has gone to wood, so that's the second ghoul, you're going to get yourself another cigarette. So 15 food, cigarette there. Okay, so this acolyte, instead of scouting the traditional way straight towards your enemy base, I always like to do this, where I scout around the other side. So my opponent thinks that they've that their enemy, me, has actually come from the top left position, but actually I haven't. So that's the reason why the acolyte is going this way, but of course you do not have to do that. It's just basically a little thing that I like to do. So the ghoul is scouting, the acolyte is scouting, let's go to Fog of War. Now what happens here is I've spotted that my opponent is at the top right, 
This means that this ghoul is going to move straight to the top right. He's going to go basically straight to where your opponent is. That's what you want to do with the ghoul, is you want to harass a little bit. It will help you out. You can, if you want, send him back to wood. It's really your choice, but personally I like to harass with the ghoul. Meanwhile, the Acolyte, after seeing this, is going to do a little look around the base, see what's going on, and then he's rallied to come over here. So, if you were first as human, again, you want to be sitting outside the gold mine. So, you can either send the Acolyte back to base, but what I like to do is I like to put it outside the gold mine that my opponent is most likely to take should they expand. So, my opponent is opposite me in this sense, so he's most likely to take the expansion furthest away from my base that is close to him. So, if I have an Acolyte here, then I might be able to spot him in the process of doing so, or at least catch him out in some way, creeping. So, that's going on. Let's continue the replay. And the ghoul, as you can see, is now coming straight up. I will mention, though, on most maps, bear in mind that as soon as you change the direction of your ghoul or scouting unit, pay attention to where the creeps are and whether your unit is going to basically pass by them and aggro them. Just make sure to uh, watch out for that. Okay, so... Death Knight's almost out. Tome of Relics is finished. As soon as Tome of Relics is finished, I get Backpack. Now, I might not even use Backpack, but it's very cheap. It's 50 gold, 25 wood, and it's very useful at certain points in the game, in certain scenarios, which you might face against. And um, particularly later on, you might want to consider a scenario where you use a ghoul, you bring him up to your lich, and the ghoul actually has picked up um, a skeletal rod and a potion of mana, where your lich is being offensive in the enemy base and is attacking consistently and would really do well with that potion of mana. So that's a scenario where you might want to use it. But it's there because I can pretty much afford it and it's nice to have that to fall back on. So you get yourself backpack. Your third ghoul is about to come out onto uh, wood. So basically you're aiming for 19 out of 20 food by the time uh, your uh, Tome of Relics is up. Your Death Knight, as soon as he comes out, he's going to sell his Scroll of Town Portal and he's going to pick up a Rod of Necromancy. That's a skeletal rod, basically. And in this case, since I know my opponent is Night Elf, I'm going to pick up a Dust of Appearance. And uh, again, you would probably do this versus Orc versus a Blade Master. But if you're against a human player or an undead, you will probably not need that Dust of Appearance early on. Very unlikely you would want it. So. Let's continue. See the Death Knight solely scroll a town portal because of the speed that this build has, its ghouls and their gargs and uh, the Death Knight unholy aura. It involves having a fast mobile army, providing you micro correctly and don't put yourself in suicidal situations. You really shouldn't need a scroll of town portal, at least not early on. You can always pick one up later on, but I choose not to. You can see the Acolyte is now outside of the gold mine, ready to see if this Night Elf player would want to expand, but it's much more likely a human player would do it. But it's nice to have that vision, knowing, and the Acolyte's got nothing better to do at this point in time. Now the Ghoul is going to come up through here and join my Death Knight to harass. One thing I will note is that, uh, obviously, when you're scouting, particularly against a Night Elf player, you will be looking for these creep camps, on Twisted Meadows that is, you will be looking at both of the mercs, uh, merc shops, mercenary camps, because Night Elf players like to creep with an Ancient of War. They plonk it down here and then they creep the camp using the Ancient of War. If they don't do it by the mercenary camp, they are almost definitely going to have an Ancient of War either here or here to creep the Null Wardens. So when you're scouting for Night Elf, what you're really doing is you're actually looking for where the Ancient of War is, because if your opponent is of a, you know, a decent quality, they will almost definitely be using their Ancient of War to creep with. So that's pretty much what you're using here with your ghoul or your acolyte is to look for them creeping and perhaps maybe get the last hit on the mob or harass them whilst they're trying to creep. So bear that in mind. That's pretty much what you're aiming to do. But of course my opponent is computer normal and he is a big camper. That's what the computer does. It gets mass units. So he gets way more units than your average normal player would do and he camps his base so it makes it quite difficult for me to show off exactly what it is you need to do in fact it made it more of a nightmare I think it would have been easier versus another player but of course the chances of getting Twisted Mellows versus a Night Elf player would involve leaving and joining and starting a lot of 
games. I already did actually try this. I got myself against a human player and I pretty much beaten within six minutes so it wasn't very good because he basically stopped playing after the initial ghoul harass but I'll get on to that in a moment I do like to be thorough with my description since I'm not going to be doing the in-depth guide with this I've already done two other build orders the human and the orc and I've decided not to do the in-depth guide and just explain things as I go as clearly as possible so that you can get the most out of this and if you want a very quick watch of how it works then the replays are there for you to go through on times eight speed if you wish right Three ghouls, five acolytes on mine, one acolyte scouting, another ghoul. So you've got four ghouls there basically in total at this point. You're still producing ghouls. So you're going to go up to 23 out of 30 food. And then you're going to aim to tech. So think of it that way. You're aiming to 23 out of 30 food. That includes your acolytes and your death knights. So the death knight is going off his way. He's going to want to basically kill a sheep on the way most likely. That way he can spawn off a skeletal rod or... You know, a skeleton warrior. Let's see. Skeleton warrior. There he goes. He's off. The ghoul spots his opponent. He is going to basically go and creep at this point. So you're just looking to be a nuisance with the ghoul whilst the death knight's trying to catch up. Meanwhile, we're looking at the base. I'm just trying to make sure I cover everything because a lot happens in this. I'm sure my APM is quite through the roof. I do overdo it a little bit in this one. A little bit try hard. But I do try to get things as clear as possible for my viewers to uh, get the most benefit out of it. So I'm just harassing this archer. You pretty much want to try to take out archers. You can go for wisps, but bear in mind that archers leave a corpse. And with a corpse you can spawn more rods of necromancy skeleton warriors. Now one thing I do here is I'm a bit more um, over the top with my skeleton warriors. If your first is a night elf opponent, you might not want to go a bit crazy on them you might want to conserve them or if you do use them try to split up the skeleton warriors because wisps can detonate and they can pretty much get rid of all your skeleton warriors in one detonate by taking themselves out it's quite nasty so bear that in mind but typically first as a human player i wanted to mention actually your human player if he was here would most likely be fast creeping this goblin laboratory here so that's where my death knight would have headed and he would have basically been picking off the peasants and the militia that were creeping because they'd be very easy to pick off and then I can get skeleton warriors out of them using the skeletal rod. Or in the unlikely case that he knows where you are and he doesn't want to go and creep this spot because it's almost suicide. It's very difficult if you're this close to your opponent. He might possibly do the Noel Warden camp or a very, very fast expansion. But again, that's why you scout so you know where your opponent is and you harass them with a death knight that's what you're looking to do here this is basically the main reason why I'm in this night off base right now it's because the night off base camps but otherwise yeah you could be um, over here I could have done that but I chose to go into the base because it's simply closer and it's more convenient to me as a player if this was a real situation than to go over there but yes you're pretty much trying to creep jack in a real realistic scenario so we're going to continue off here. Meanwhile, we're going to look at the base. Your five ghouls are going to return their wood and then go to the death knight. And this will put you up well. You basically want to make sure that you return the ghouls wood. So long as you have at least 210 wood. Because you're going to want to tech as soon as you do so. So you can see tech goes off. Ghouls are now coming up to my death knight. I'll split the skeleton rods as best as possible whilst trying to pick off wisps. Pretty much waiting for my opponent to return back to base. Then I'm going to go for archers again so I can get some more skeleton warriors. Should I feel the need. Now, let's have a little look. I'm just checking, making sure I'm not missing anything out. So we've still got our skeleton um, ghouls joining my forces. So I'm going to have six ghouls in total to harass here. One thing to note is you're going to be left with very little wood so um, you might want to leave one ghoul back at base depending on how you're feeling in this scenario but I am a bit of an all-in style of player so I will pretty much come and attack or the other thing to note is if your opponent is cross map and it's very inconvenient for you to go all this distance to your opponent you almost always do want to attack your opponent however you can use these ghouls to creep the Noel Warden camps because your death knight and your ghouls are very effective at creeping these camps and you can pick up the items later just bear that in mind you can differ it slightly okay so we can see lots of harass here Princess of the Moon is super annoying, the computer really heavily focuses your death knight for some reason, your main hero, but that's okay because that just lets me get away with murder pretty much, literally. So, 
One thing to note here is whilst all this harass is going on... Well, you, oh, actually, another thing to note. There's so much to say. There's so much to say, which is why I need to do these video guys. And like I say, you've got the replays if you just want the raw footage. Okay, so... Bear this in mind. Do not spec Death Coil or Unholy Aura until you see what your opponent is, obviously. And um, then, even then, if your opponent is Night Elf, for example, and they've gone Demon Hunter, you're going to want to go Unholy Aura first in most cases. If you want to go Death Coil, I'm not stopping you. I'm just saying you will typically go Unholy Aura because that way his mana burn is pretty inefficient because you're going to be getting the Aura. You don't need the mana so much because you're not using it for Death Coils. So bear that in mind. Try to resist specking straight into Death Coil. It's very hard, I know. But if your opponent is, say, for example, a Warden or a Pierce of the Moon or Keep the Grave, you're almost definitely going to want to go Death Coil first. And versus the other races, you're going to be going Death Coil. It's just pretty much against Demon Hunter. If you see Demon Hunter, go Unholy Aura first. Okay, so. As soon as you get 215 gold plus, you're going to build a graveyard in your base. All the meanwhile, you're basically harassing. So you can see my opponent is not having the best time. I'm harassing. Now, one way I treated this was I pretty much retreat at this point because I'm trying to treat this somewhat like an actual realistic game. And obviously here, I could finish the game right now and kill the computer if I wanted to within like the first four minutes. But what I choose to do is I return back to base because in a realistic situation your opponent is going to be quite a bit better than computer normal so he's probably going to have put up quite a bit of a fight so if you have any weak ghouls make sure you send them back so if a ghoul gets like to about this much health or this much health send it back to base because you're going to need that wood anyway later on but obviously keep your healthy ghouls in the fight until eventually you will have to retreat so it's probably about this point versus a decent player that you might find yourself having to retreat back to base anyway it's like oh I've, all my ghouls are very weak I've got to run back now and I've got to get that wood anyway so bear that in mind you're going to want a lot of wood if you're going to continue with this build order because you're going to need it for the buildings to come so you probably want to send a certain amount of ghouls back to base anyway even if they aren't that injured just remember you're harassing your hard you're not necessarily trying to win the game exactly yet if you can then by all means go for it but realistically you're just harassing you're trying to pick off units and just be a general nuisance whilst you're teching up so graveyard is built next thing to build whilst we're retreating back to base is another crypt so we're going to get two crypts. This means we're going to be able to double pump gargs once the tier 2 has been reached. One thing I want to do is try to keep your death knight, if he has got unholy aura, with your ghouls. This allows him to retreat back to base faster. So I think I send him back in a moment, realizing this. Going, oh, hang on a second. Those ghouls want to come back a bit quicker? Come on. There we go. A little bit bonus speed and healing. Meanwhile, as soon as you can build a cigarette, you do so. So during that teching and harassing phase, your build order is going to be then graveyard to crypt to ziggurat. Think of it that way. And you're up to 27 food because I got two more ghouls. Okay. I believe. Yes. Two more ghouls. So we tech to 23 food. Then I got two more ghouls and then graveyard, crypt and ziggurat. So think of it that way. I will probably put down a description of what you need to build and when pretty much uh, in the description somewhere. Now you can keep your death knight with your ghouls whilst they're chopping wood because this helps hit them heal and it gives them a little bit extra speed to bring back that wood. You're going to bring back as much wood as you possibly can. Don't forget you've got your acolyte so in a situation you might want to use him to scout further on versus a different opponent but I know my opponent is night elf and it's camping his base so it's not really a problem. Now one thing to note this is where things get complicated because otherwise I'd have to do like so many build orders and it's just going to be overwhelming and I just haven't got that much time. Is that If your opponent is human or orc, you're most likely going to be either. If your opponent is orc, you're probably going more along the fiends build. So you might want to pay attention to my other build order that I'll be going over and you would simply go more ghouls at the start and then heavy on the fiends towards destroyers. Okay? Versus human players... You will do something similar to this build order, except you most likely will not get a second crypt. You will be getting a lot of ghouls, and then you can get a couple of fiends. 
to help you out, but you'll still be aiming towards destroyers. So you'll be going for statues, then in morphing them into destroyers. Perhaps frostworms, should the frostworms be needed at that point. So we're still focusing on our Ghoul and Gargs build, which is basically primarily focused on beating night elf players and to a lesser extent undead players. In undead one versus one mirror match basically you're looking to be very aggressive with your lich constantly attacking attack with a few ghouls leave a few ghouls in base but always pretty much be harassing pestering your opponent then you're going to switch to gargoyles you can potentially go towards abominations and fiends and statues as backup that's your choice but I've seen a lot of undead players go for straight up ghouls and gargs and um, it seems to work quite well so that's what I'm covering here so bear in mind our buildings are done our crypts are waiting the death knights getting impatient you can top up on another rod of necromancy if you want to but I choose not to because I want to save up as much gold as possible as soon as this tech has finished what am I going to do? I'm going to tech straight to tier 3 Upgrade. boom now 385 gold get yourself two gargs so double pump those gargs from the crypt and then what you're going to do is you're going to bring six ghouls leave two ghouls you want two to three ghouls at your base at most points as an undead player because otherwise you're going to have no wood so bring six ghouls your death knight and you're going to go and basically creep at this point so bear that in mind make sure you return the lumber from your ghouls and to make things simple for you you take your death knight you take your six ghouls and you go and creep meanwhile you're going to build six gargoyles so you're going to double pump them when possible so the first two are going to be rallied to go behind your opponent's base so in this case they're going to be rallied roughly to here Bear this in mind, and I will show this later on, my opponent I think in this game is a very nasty piece of work and tries to take out my Gargs. If you are rallying Gargs, they are quite vulnerable, especially to a nasty Priestess of the Moon with her archers, is be careful with where they're rallied to. One, you don't want to give away too much of your opponent, although they probably will know you're going Gargs if they're good enough. And two, you don't really want to give away your position where they're coming from. So you know make sure you don't lose them as well whilst they're making their way to their rally point so let's continue death knight is on his way he's looking good he's bringing up his ghouls he's getting ready he's gonna scout around i think i wanted a sheep normally there's a sheep here i'll look for it he's i have to go over here to get it so you can kill a sheep get a skeletal rod it will help you creep that a little bit faster i didn't know that my opponent was here cheekily doing this although most of the time your opponent won't be going precious to me let alone doing that creep camp there so that was kind of unusual so we're going to start off this creep camp you want to pick off the knoll wardens first they're just a nuisance with the purges and just you can pick them off pretty quickly with ghouls and then you're going to go for your knoll overseer Make sure, uh, if you you kind of want a ghoul to get battered by the Knoll Overseer, so that way, when you're closest to your base like this, you can send that ghoul back, and when you send a ghoul back, replace him with a healthier ghoul at your base. So he's going to replace him, so you can see that's going on. Now, we're double pumping gargs. Once again, as soon as the gold is available, double pump those gargs. You can see, two are now pretty much at their rally point at here. Meanwhile, the Death Knight is looking to get level 3 before he probably goes and attacks again, which is something you can do, but I choose to keep on creeping because I know I can, whilst my Gargs harass. It gives me that power, so I'm going to look for other creep camps to do. On this map particularly, you're going to be doing Null Wardens and Overseers, whichever ones seem most um, adequate at that point in time. So Gargs are still rallying. Death Knight's moving up to do this creep camp over here because my opponent most likely would have done this creep camp at this point in the game. I'm trying to be as realistic as possible. Whilst I'm moving to creep, this is quite intense on micro and also a little bit on macro, this build. So it takes a lot of practice. It certainly took me quite a lot of practice. So you're going to want to harass your opponent with your gargs. Try to pick off as many wisps as possible. They're going to be the easiest thing to kill from your opponent's army. You're going to take the minimum amount of damage trying to take out wisps as opposed to archers and whatnot. And you're also going to really hurt your opponent's economy. And you're going to slow down their 
ability to get you know counters to your gargs like ancient protectors and get those ancients of lore up quicker and dryads are quite wood heavy they cost 60 wood each so that's quite heavy my opponent your opponent probably won't be camping his base like this or at least not with that many archers as well so you're probably going to have a slightly easier time than i did here i pretty much was just showing garg harass for show's sake you know so you do a little bit of harass, you move back. You're a nuisance to your opponent. But obviously you want to try to take off Wisps as much as possible, when possible. Meanwhile, we're creeping here. Trying not to lose any ghouls. If you do lose a ghoul, then it's going to pretty much happen. You can replace it, but we are pretty much trying to focus on gargoyles with this build. That is the end game goal. And like I say, I've pretty much explained what I was doing if I was versus, um, you know, human. You'd be aiming towards destroyers. You wouldn't even be going gargs necessarily. Versus orc, you'd be heavier on fiends and you'd be going destroyers. So think of it that way. Versus undead, pretty much doing ghouls and gargs or a bombs, destroy, um, a bombs, fiends and statues. And maybe destroyers if you really want to go for that as well. Okay, so with that said, I can come back to this specific strategy versus Night Elf. Now, at this point, you've got four Gargs, well, you've got four Gargs built, and your other Gargs are almost halfway through, and your tech is at least halfway through. You're going to be getting yourself a cigarette, basically. So 39 food, cigarettes. You, it's important you get this cigarette up, because that way you can get a lich up as soon as the cigarette is finished. If you want to, you can cancel these two gargs, for example, and get the lich earlier. But I like to get my lich um, as pretty much as tier 3 comes out, or very shortly afterwards, because I'm pretty much ready at that point to attack. But bear that in mind, you can always cancel these two gargs, get the Lich a little bit earlier, get the cigarette, and then get the two gargs later on. But this build is more focused on garg harass than it is getting out that Lich ASAP. So that's pretty much what I'm going for. The more gargs you get out, the easier it is to pick off Wisps. Okay. So we're still just creeping, having fun with the Death Knight, doing what we do. Noel Overseer about to go down. Going to pick up the item. And we're going to move off and go and creep again one more time if you got your lich out a little bit earlier then you could probably return back to base from this point and uh, get him kitted out and then go and attack but like I say I leave it a little bit later because I want to get those gargs out as much as possible we've got six gargs now we're going to creep gargs are still harassing being a nuisance my opponent is finding it tough to creep he's looking should I go back should I creep screw it I'm gonna creep and that's what he's going to do. Gargs are having an easy time and just moving back and forth, harassing, showing how it works pretty much. Meanwhile, I'm looking over here, trying to pull these back. It gets a bit tricky at this point, trying not to lose a ghoul, and I was really trying not to lose a ghoul. I do not want to lose a ghoul. Everything counts. Do not lose anything if you can help it. Tech is about to go off. We're creeping. We're harassing with gargs. Six gargs. Cigarettes about to finish. Lich is going to be produced. And then you're going to get yourself Ghoul Frenzy with one of the crypts and Stone Form with the other crypt. So Golden Wood should allow, should allow for all of this. Which is why we don't quite need the Lich out just yet because we're not attacking until we've pretty much got Ghoul Frenzy researched and Stone Form researched. So we're still creeping, picking up whatever we can. And then now this Death Knight's going to return back to base. He's definitely level 3. You want to be aiming for level 3 really if you can. And these ghouls are going to return back to base. They're going to get whatever wood they can. Gargs can keep harassing. But it's not easy when your opponent keeps coming back to base like that. But they might try. Look for the opportunities when possible and go for it. And then bring them back as soon as you start to get in trouble again. Because those archers are annoying. So we can see the researchers are almost done. You can pick up um, a skeletal rod again if you wish to. You can even go to a shop and pick up a boost of speed. Try to get one that's already been crept. If not, you can run in and then run out. It depends on where you are, what your situation is, how convenient it is to you. But having a boost of speed is useful for your lich, but not 100% necessary. So we can see here. Research complete. 
Our research is done. I'm going to use the stone form on the gargoyles that have taken damage during my harass and use the other gargoyles that are healthy to keep harassing. Um, Lich is almost out. You're going to save your gold so you can get basically decent items. So Lich is going to pick up all the corruption straight away and then I believe I get a healing scroll as well. But obviously if you've got boots of speed that's 250 gold so that's gone. So that's the way I look at it. Is um, It depends on your situation how much gold you got away with, where you are at this point in the game. Try to get as many items as you can because you're looking to attack at this point now. So the more items you have the stronger your attack is going to be. That's healing scroll or to a much lesser extent scroll of protection definitely get healing scrolls over scroll of protection that's not really much of a priority scroll of protection um boost of speed invulnerability pot anything like that that's going to be very useful when you're being offensive particularly in a in an opponent's base so we can see gargoyles are going to regroup they're going to be ready ghouls so bring back at least 200 you're looking at 200 to 300 wood before going and attacking any further because you're going to be pretty much bringing almost everything apart from a couple of ghouls so we're doing the same process again six ghouls lich is ready he's picked up an orb of corruption a scroll of healing he's good to go so you bring in six ghouls your death knight and your lich and your gargs will probably still be harassing so you're going to meet up with them and try to pick off your opponent in certain other games you might be looking to creep jack your opponent with this army whilst continuously harassing but uh, for me personally i'm looking to end the game so i'm coming and attacking with everything i've got and the scroll of healing is going to go a long way if it's combined with all of my units so two ghouls are left 44 food so what you're looking to do is pretty much come and attack now. Gargs are going to meet up with my army. We're going to get all chummy and we're going to go and attack my opponent's main base. Just paying attention here to what I do build wise. It looks like I might be going for... yes. So I'm going to double pump Gargs. So I'm pretty much going to be looking to get 48 food or 50 food it's army wise on you know gargoyles at this point and rally them to join me in my attack what you could do is you could get yourself um a, uh forgot the name now uh my goodness how can i not remember the name that's really bizarre okay so one of them is the sacrificial pit and the other one is slaughterhouse my goodness i really could not get the name for some reason so get yourself a slaughterhouse and yourself a sacrificial pit and you can use your spare acolyte who hasn't been killed yet or if he has been killed rebuild another one and you can use that acolyte on this sacrificial pit to create a shade and that will allow you to keep an eye on your opponent or just to join you and help see invisible units since you probably use your dust of appearance by this point Although you can always pick up another dust of appearance in case you feel the need to. So for me personally, I go up to 48 food or 50 food. So pretty much cap out on units, so gargoyles. And then I get myself uh, a slaughterhouse and uh, a sacrificial pit. So we're just attacking at this point. Gargoyles are trying to pick off um, wisps. Ghouls are going for like crucial buildings like Ancients of Wonder or Moon Wells when convenient. And um, yeah that's it I do cap out so I go for 50 food on gargoyles we're just attacking pretty much obliterating my opponent here orb of corruption is very good for focusing down particular units my opponent has now got a demon hunter which is very annoying I want to try to get out of this situation Lich is getting pretty heavily blocked but I have got death coil to help him out I didn't use any uh, frost novas not just yet I wanted to wait for a slightly better opportunity to do so and I can pretty much take quite a few of those um, mana burns I'm fine at this point gargoyles moving in looks like I'm gonna pick off my uh, enemy's demon hunter because he's just such a nuisance pretty much insta giving him that's half point half speed there okay so whilst this is going on you can look at the resources I'm very doing very well we're attacking so I'm just gonna keep an eye but I'm pretty sure at this point now slaughterhouse then sacrificial pit when you are capable remember bring this acolyte back if you still have an acolyte and you no longer need him to scout because you can use him as a shade in the sacrificial pit otherwise build another one for your black citadel and then just continue your attack um 
I've got the scroller healing here. I don't think I ever use it because I pretty much don't need to use it. I just simply bought it as an example for what an item is that you might want to build or get at this point in the game. And I've just pretty much obliterated my opponent. <laughs> that death demon hunter comes back out and goes straight for a mana burn on my lich. He really doesn't like that lich very much. So you can see all of this is going down. Um, at this point, Acolyte eventually will become a shade. So that's going to happen. Still attacking. You're going to get Cigarette as well. So once you've built, you get yourself a slaughterhouse, then a sacrificial pit, then a cigarette, perhaps two cigarettes, depending on how um, heavy you want to go on units. Otherwise, you can stay at the 50 food cap and just continuously buy healing scrolls and items that use up your gold that way. But I'm showing um, this as a typical game. So what I would do in a typical game, or most pro players is they will get themselves um, uh, obsidian statue two of them ideally and then from there on really you can do whatever you want this game is now up to you you can even go for you know a boneyard and then frost worms later on it really doesn't matter if you're going for abominations bear in mind you probably want to get to seed cloud unless you're against undead because it doesn't work against undead and uh, yeah that is pretty much the build there you have it. Uh, check out the replay. It will show you exactly what to do. But I hope that I've explained things well enough. And uh, there you go. That is how it's done. Thank you very much for watching this section. Stay tuned for the next section, which will go over Death Knight, Lich, Fiend, Statues, and Frostworms. Hey guys, welcome to the Death Knight, Lich, Fiend, Statues, and Frostworms build order. So I shall be going over this, and as previously mentioned, I will be uh, pointing out various areas where you might want to differ the build. You might not be going Frostworms with this build, you might be going heavy on the Fiends, you don't know. You might be going crazy on the Fiends, or you might go towards Destroyers. This build is pretty flexible, and I'll point out various points where you can do that. So, this is really your build for 4 versus 4 RT. In fact, I think I named the replay um, lazy death knight you know, lich fiends and frostwind statues and all that kind of stuff because it is pretty much a lazy build it's quite a comfortable build and um i suggest that if you are a new player then you stick to trying this build first and then move on to the other build that i mentioned and you can always differ this build slightly for example get more ghouls it will allow you to get more faster tech better you know higher tech units such as destroyers or frostworms but if you're being a bit more lazy and you want to focus on fiends you can do that but what this build does what i do in this build is i focus for death knight lich five fiends although four to five fiends is fine but five fiends two statues and a frostworm but like i say you might just want to scrap the frostworm and go full-on fiends you might want to scrap the Frostworm and go Fiends to Destroyers. Really, it is quite flexible. But if you do go Fiends to Destroyers or Fiends, uh, you know, just full-on Fiends, um, you might... No, no. Yeah, you go full-on Fiends, you can get away with this. I'd just say if the only time where you want to differ this build is, for example, if you're going for Destroyers, then... You might want to get yourself an extra Ghoul or two because you really need the wood otherwise yeah this build is very tight on wood so if you find yourself suffering a little bit for wood when you're practicing this build you can get yourself another ghoul it's not going to kill you and i'll point out the point where you can do it you'll just pretty much get one less fiend or you can actually use that ghoul and he can be very productive later on and you can just get rid of him a bit later on and i might do that in future games but this way on this build particularly this is the laziest build and it's a good one so stay tuned so let's get going with it so we're going to start off send a free acolytes of the gold mine one ghoul to wood i've used the map market square because it's a typical four versus four map and i think it's the one i'm going to use for any games where i'm showing off four versus four strategies um so we're going to go for a crypt first and a graveyard so you're building an acolyte sending it to your gold mine crypt then graveyard so there we go acolyte is on his way to the gold mine crypt goes up graveyard goes up and then we're going to get ourselves another acolyte in a moment 
when gold allows. So that way we get ourselves up to five acolytes on that gold mine. Then we're going to go on to get ourselves an altar. I like to build my altar next to the graveyard and the same with the shop because that way as soon as the death knight comes out he can get his rod, uh, skeletal rod working basically and get the skeletal warriors out. So you go crypt, graveyard, you fill up your gold mine, then altar and then a cigarette over here this time. <laughs> So, yes, definitely build your cigarette closer to your graveyard, but have it, you know, within range of your gold mine. So, you're going to get yourself a ghoul as soon as the crypt is up, and 120 gold is allowed. So, bear in mind, the reason why we get the cigarette closer to the graveyard is so that if you get a Nerubian tower, which you will do, is um, that way you can help defend against early rushes. And 4 versus 4, anything goes. So, I like to play a bit more reckless, so sometimes I might not get and the Rubian Tower, but I'm simply showing this as it should be done, basically. And what this means is that your fiend, your second fiend will be a little bit more delayed. And that's why I'm reckless, is because I, I go all in. But if you're being realistic here, and 4 versus 4, you can pretty much expect almost anything. And your opponent could be this close, which they actually are. Luckily, I don't actually bump into my opponent, but they could be this close and they could be rushing. So you want that Nerubian Tower. Okay, so... What I do here with the ghoul, okay, is I move him over to the graveyard once the crypt has started building the next ghoul. The reason why is because when that ghoul has 20 wood, he's going to bring it to this graveyard. So you're just getting that wood in as quickly as possible. This, this build really is tough on wood. So the good thing about 4 versus 4, you can use this for solo, bear in mind. But if you do it for solo, I suggest you get two more ghouls and one less fiend. Something like that, basically. You would focus a bit more on ghouls so you can actually get some buildings out. <laughs> but otherwise, if you do this build exactly right, you won't have a problem. But you can always ask your allies for wood. You never know. So, ghoul is coming over here to the graveyard. You've got another ghoul coming out. And the acolyte from your gold mine is going to build a shop next to your altar of darkness. Or wherever, wherever it works for you. But I've built in such a manner that I'm blocking off my base as well. So... I can't block off entirely versus um, humans or undeads in the sense that ghouls and footmen will still be able to reach my gold mine. But the way I build here, at least on this map, and you want to try to aim to do this whenever you possibly can, is versus annoying blade masters and grunts. They can't get into this base. You got great. Uh, you're gonna have a crypt block in here. You're gonna have a cigarette here. You're gonna have a cigarette here. Cigarette here, and graveyard. And also tome of relics and altar block out enemy heroes in that sense as well. And they can't get through. Whereas your heroes can move in and out of the tome of relics and altar pathways. Okay. With that said. Let's continue. So at this point in the game, we've got five acolytes and gold mine. We've got two ghouls. We've got ourselves a crypt. We've got ourselves a graveyard, an altar, then a cigarette, and a tome of relics. So obviously the first hero is almost definitely going to be a death knight. But if this is 4 versus 4 RT, then you can pretty much do what you want. But you're going to be going death knight, let's face it. So as soon as the cigarette's up, death knight, and you get yourself a fiend from your crypt. So boom, that's happening right there. Now, you're going to want to get yourself a cigarette as soon as gold allows. So, get myself a cigarette here. That helps block off a little bit more. Makes it a bit more tricky to get into my base for the time being. And that definitely should block against orc players. Now, what happens here is we get ourselves a Nerubian tower when gold allows. As I mentioned before, if you were going to play risky and not get the Nerubian Tower, you would be able to build your second fiend pretty much straight after your first. But if you do get a Nerubian Tower, which I highly suggest you do, then you're going to have to wait a little bit longer before you get your second fiend. Your first fiend's going to come out. He's going to scout. Bear in mind that this is the point in time where your opponent can have a hero. They can have it from a tavern or they could be rushing right now. So do not scout too far. Don't be too brave with that fiend. Because if your opponent is rushing with a Keeper of the Grove, that fiend's pretty much dead because of Entangle. So just get a little bearing. Just see what's going on on the map. And then return him back to base in the safety range of that Nerubian Tower. So we're going to get ourselves a fiend as soon as it allows. This is the reason why you go two ghouls at the start. This is the lazy fiend build. Two ghouls means you're going to struggle for wood a little bit. But it does allow you to get pretty much two fiends out without needing that cigarette up. 
So Death Knight is going to come out very shortly in a moment. He's going to pick up a Skeletal Rod and a Dust of Appearance because you never know when you need Dust of Appearance in 4 vs 4 RT. But if you were using this in solo and you were a versus an opponent such as a human, for example, or you know undead, you're probably not going to need Dust of Appearance at the start. But again, I assume that you probably know this. So Skeletal Rod. Are you going to use that straight away next to the graveyard? Because you... If 4 versus 4 RT, for example, this is what the build is based on, but like I say, it's flexible. Um, you really, 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 really want to focus on creeping as fast as possible. I am so adamant with it. Get as strong as possible and be as powerful as possible so you can be a really good uh, contributor to your team. So we're going to have two skeleton warriors and a fiend. And they're going to get ready to start creeping the first creep camp, which is going to be over here. The death knight's going to hang back a little bit. Because I've got the Nerubian tower, I'm going to have to hang back a little bit longer, waiting for that dust of appearance. And there it goes. Oh, there it is. So you let these units get out in front. The death knight's fast enough to catch up. Now, one thing to bear in mind is if you really want to struggle for wood here or if you've got allies that are willing to give you wood or you're being fed if you're being fed it changes everything because you're probably going to go double crit but just say for example you're being fed uh, you're getting wood in some shape or form you probably won't need to get a third ghoul but I really suggest you do get a third ghoul Three ghouls minimum, basically, because this is tough on wood. I've already mentioned it. In fact, I'd almost suggest that you get a fourth ghoul, but that's not the way I did it on this game. So, I'm just going to show this. The crypt is going to get a ghoul, so we can see a third ghoul is coming out after your second fiend. And we're going to pick off the weakest unit in the nearest creep camp that we're creeping. Okay? This allows us to get another Rod of Necromancy, another Skeleton Warrior up straight away. And as soon as that little guy is down, we're going to go for the big guy, the Renegade Wizard. You want to kill him, he's going to drop the item, and you want to get him down as quickly as possible before anyone else can. Try to use Micro if you can to try to save your Skeleton Warrior. So for example here, my Skeleton Warrior is being focused, so I send him back to attack this Fiend. So you press A, then left click on the Fiend, and then you stop him. So you don't actually go ahead with that attack, but you let it go through in the motion for a, a split second. That way your opponent, or your creep AI, the computer basically, will for some reason think that he is no longer a hostile unit and stop attacking him and move on to the next unit. Okay, so we bring him down, we move in, we use our next Rod of Necromancy straight away. We're going to try to get these skeletons on that Renegade Wizard. Meanwhile, everything is fine and dandy in base. That's what I wanted to mention, is when your opponent, or rough, when you're, you can do this if you're creep jacking, but, but uh, when you're creeping and there's a big mob like that, a level 5 renegade wizard or something, that's definitely going to drop the item, you want to use death coil, okay, as your finisher. Do not burn through death coil, save it for the last hit on any special mobs that drop an item, okay? Or you can just save it entirely and gamble, basically, and hope that an enemy blade master wasn't there trying to pick off the last hit but just bear in mind that you're assuming that there is an enemy blade master you can always use dust of appearance as well before that last hit goes off so you can save yourself the mana on the death coil depends how you want to play it me personally I know I've got the mana and I can get away with it so I death coil the renegade wizard when he's got a hundred health or lower because that Death Coil is going to do 100 points of damage versus a computer unit like that. So that way you Death Coil him, you get the last hit, you get the guaranteed 23 gold or whatever it might be, and you pick up the item, which is the Gloves of Haste. So we're going to finish off this creep camp. Bear in mind, I'm not building any more fiends at this point. My next objective right now is to tech. So we're going to finish off this creep camp, and we're going to move up to the next point. And we're going to tech as soon as available. So boom, that's going through. Still got three ghouls and wood. You want these ghouls to be as near that graveyard as possible. I cannot stress enough how tough this is on wood. And if you do want to change this build for whatever shape form, this is the point where you might do it. You've got your tech going. So what you might do is you get yourself one more ghoul. Four ghouls will be enough, okay? So you just get yourself one more ghoul. If you want to get yourself two more ghouls, heck, I can't stop you. But I'm just saying, this is something you can do. So if you were doing solo, you would probably definitely get yourself four ghouls for wood. 
And um, I'll probably mention it later on, but bear in mind that if you do get that extra ghoul, it means that it's going to block out the extra res uh, the, the food level you need for a frostworm. But I'll point it out now, basically, is you can either use that ghoul to help you creep later on to kill him off, or more ideally, you will have the lich out by this point, and you can use the lich's dark ritual on the ghoul, killing the ghoul, bringing you back to 43 out of 50 food, which you will be at this point given your lich mana, and that ghoul would have pretty much paid off for itself, so I pretty much do suggest that you do actually get another ghoul at this point, but this is the lazy fiend build, so you are going heavy on fiends, okay? You are going heavy on fiends, you ain't got no time for ghouls. You're getting fiends as soon as you can. So let's keep going, shall we? Oh, Death Knight's moving up to his next creep camp, you can obviously change it how you like on the map. This is a map, for example, this is how I'm going to do it on this map. Moving the Skeleton Warriors, first of all, you want to pick off this Assassin because he applies a dot, a spear basically, that does damage over time to each unit, which is very annoying. He's going to do it, so the quicker you can kill him, the better, basically. If you can try to get yourself a Skeleton Warrior to tank the Bandit or any melee units that seem to be stuck in your Fiends, try to do so because melee... Uh, Melee. Melee. I can't say melee. I always call it melee. I know I do. I'm, I apologize. Melee. It's one of these words I'm going to have to try to train myself to say. But melee. It sounds so weird to me saying that, but melee units, if they are on your fiends, get them off them, basically, because your fiends take extra damage from melee. Okay? Right. So, when gold allows, you got yourself your free ghouls, you've done your tech, you're going to get yourself another fiend. You're pretty much going to be building fiends from there on because, like I say, this is the lazy fiend build. Once again, I death coil, last hit, pick up the item, deny my opponent possible experience, finish off the creep camp, and then once I've done this, I'm going to move on to the next one. So you can see, I think I've got one fiend ready to come out, and I should have another fiend in a mo. Oh no, actually, that's it. That's it. So it's important. You get your third fiend, and once your third fiend has started building, the next thing you're going to build is a cigarette as soon as you can, because you're going to want that up, because you might get a little bit food capped. So you get yourself a cigarette, so you get your third fiend, cigarette gets built next, and then when you're allowed to, you're going to get yourself a fourth fiend to start researching or training in the crypt. We're going to carry on creeping these assassins. They can potentially drop a tome of experience, which is very handy. We like those, if you can get those. Ah, there we go. Two tomes of agility, I think I got, which are terrible on a death knight, but hey-ho, not everything goes your way. So I'm not going to keep playing this game, so it's ideal situations. That wouldn't be fair. So we're going to carry on getting fiends. Like I say, if we get that cigarette out just a little bit quicker, you can get yourself your next fiend, which should be the fifth fiend. So you've crept this camp. This is using Market Square, for example. I'm just going to say this for Market Square. You can use this however you're going to do this, but this is what I will show you a little uh, creep exploit technique. So we've crept this point. We've got DK and three fiends. The fourth fiend is making his way straight to the war golem here. And obviously you've got your next fiend that's going to be rallied to your death knight. Make sure that you rally here. So you right click here and then you shift right click on your death knight. That means that your unit is going to pop out here and then rally towards your death knight. If you don't, there's a good chance that your fiend might spawn at the back and get blocked in the base. Potentially if you haven't chopped all the trees down. So just bear that in mind whilst I'm thinking about it. Okay, so let's carry on. I'm having fun with this. Are you? So the Death Knight's are moving over. Oh my goodness, there we go. Crypt Fiend is ready to do his thing. So he is going to come over here. I'm just, before I start that off, I just want to make sure that I'm not missing out anything else in the base. So you are aiming for five Fiends. If you want to go crazy on the Fiends, by all means, continue building Fiends. Even then, I still suggest you get a Slaughterhouse and two Statues. So if you're doing a build where you basically don't get Frostworms, then this is uh, that would actually be a pretty typical game for 4 versus 4 RT. But I do suggest that you do pretty much try to go for Frost Worms because they are stupidly strong in 4 versus 4 RT. And this is obviously a build that isn't based on an expansion. If you go for an expansion, then definitely get yourself more ghouls before teching, you know. That way you can definitely comfortably afford an expansion. You'll probably be rallying Echoes. But eventually, 
you're going to have yourself an expansion, you're going to have five acolytes on it, and you're going to have a one or two more ghouls, otherwise you're going to still be doing this whole build order where you're going fiends, statues, and dis destroyers, or uh, frostworms, whichever you want to go for. Okay, so we're aiming for five fiends in total with this very specific build, and um, zero expansion basically, because you don't actually need an expansion if you do this right. And uh, the quicker you get to tier 3, the more powerful you get anyway. An expansion is very nice, but it does slow you down quite a lot, particularly as undead. Right, so we're paying attention to this fiend here. I'll show you what he does. He's going to aggro the war golem. He's going to get one little shot. The beauty with the fiends is they have a delayed attack, or their attack animation is so slow it means it gives them time to run away before they've even aggroed. So boom, there he goes. He's going to run around here. So this is where you initially start your first creek camp. And he's going to run straight here. That means the war golem is going to... His path is going to go here and then straight to here. Do not bring the fiend back here because it will be harder to do. Make sure the war golem comes into this space over here. Now as he's doing so, I'm going to move in with the rest of my army and that fiend. And perform a bit of a block. At the very least, you want to stop his path from getting back. But even better get a full block on him. Now it's a bit annoying because he will hurt your fiends. Now if you really want to, you can use your fiends, as I showed before, to attack skeleton warriors. So you can select your fiends and your death knight and attack for a split second of skeleton warriors. What this will do is force the war golem to attack the skeleton warriors first, but even then he's stubborn and he might start attacking your fiends because that's just what he's going to do. So that's something you can do, but it's, it's up to you. So you can see I'm at five fiends now. 31 out of 40 food, free ghouls, and don't worry, I've got plenty of death coils left for that fiend should I need to, but I did move him back just in case. So you get an easy kill on him, because he's very annoying, and then you can pick up the item, and carry on finishing off the rest of this creep camp. Meanwhile, in the base, the tech is going to go off, and you're going to, I think, tech straight away again? Yes. So you tech straight away to tier 3, that's what this build order is basically about. And very shortly after that, you're going to get yourself web. Because this is treated as a 4 versus 4 RT. If you were doing this in 1 versus 1, bear in mind that your opponent might not necessarily be getting air. If they're human, there's a chance they'll be getting dragon hawks, so scout for it. If they're orc, there's a chance they'll be getting wivens, so scout for it. If they're undead, there's a chance they'll be getting... Yeah, you'll, you'll want web eventually, but I don't think you'll want it very early on. And Night Elf, very rarely do they go Hippo Riders. So this is for 4 versus 4 RT, mostly. Would you really, really want to get web first? Otherwise, you're going to build yourself a Slaughterhouse. But I go web first and then Slaughterhouse. And as you can see, wood is very tight. Having that extra goal would be great. But that's just a life choice I made. This is a lazy build. And um, I'm finishing off this creep camp. Meanwhile, I'm using another fiend here to pull this nasty creep camp. This is currently invisible. Now it's aggroed. You can see they lit up a little bit there as soon as the fiend became within aggro range. They're initially invisible, so you have to step quite close to them. Bear in mind if you're doing this. As soon as you see the bandit lord, attack him once. This will activate his divine shield. And that puts that on cooldown, basically. And then you're pulling the fiend back. Now, this is not an easy creep camp to do. And this army is pretty strong, but it's not quite strong enough to do this just yet. So you're going to want to basically get lots of pop shots at them. So whilst they're running towards you, hit them as they're about to start hitting your units. And then they run back. Because that's like maximum distance, you can see here. It's like maximum distance for them to travel. And then you just basically get those delayed attacks. And this will keep pulling them back. So whilst that was going on... I've sent an acolyte to go and build a slaughterhouse. The web is almost finished. Slaughterhouse is down. Back in the gold mine. Ghouls are like, where's the wood? We're going to keep pulling this creep camp as possible. Finish off that annoying little mob that didn't decide to die the first time. And then just keep doing this. Pull this creep camp back over and over. And try to bring down the bandit lord if you can. So... There we go. Tech is going through. It's halfway through. I'm just trying to keep an eye on things. You can get yourself a surround on the Bandit Lord, but bear in mind that if you do, you take a lot of damage from uh, these melee unit attacks. So uh, it's a bit of a risky move. So I wouldn't always suggest it. Maybe do it here and there, but make sure you micro like hell because all of these units have melee type attack and they will do bonus damage to your fiends. And you don't want that.
Okay, this is why I need to keep an eye because when I'm doing this, it's happening so fast. Uh, you can see whilst I'm creeping this, as soon as wood allows, after you've built the slaughterhouse and you've got yourself a web and burrow. So I started researching burrow as well. So it was web, a slaughterhouse, burrow, and then a cigarette. Okay. So that's going down. We're going to finish off this creep camp soon. And don't worry, that's pretty much why I'm getting Burrow. Burrow and Web are almost always must-haves for 4 versus 4 RT. And they're also good for solo in certain situations. But yeah, you're going to pretty much want them anyway. But especially for 4 versus 4 RT. Now before I finish him off, you can see the slaughterhouse is finished. I believe I'm going to go and get myself two statues from this. But what I really want is I want to start getting the Lich soon. Because once you hit about this point just slightly over halfway through the tech towards tier 3. If you start building a lich like right now, it will guarantee come out just as the tech is finished. So basically before the G. So I'll keep an eye on that. Now let's go back over here. We're about to finish off our bandit lord and get the imbalanced item. Death Knight's going to get some nice experience as well. It is an inferno stone. It is the main reason why you try to do this creek camp. However, you can get other great items such as the ice revenant or the fur bulg. Um, you can get yourself demonic figurine. All fantastic items. And you can get yourself scroll of animate dead or scroll of resurrection which, you know, aren't quite so great. But they could be great. And if none of them are great to you, then you can always sell it. And I believe it sells for about 400 gold. So it's worth doing regardless. Bear in mind that you can get Crypt Jack. So obviously uh, use Dust of Appearance before you pick off the Bandit Lord or Death Coil him to finish him off. It depends how you're looking at it. So you can see the first Obsidian Statue is coming out. I'm pretty damn sure. Very, very shortly I'm going to build a Lich. So you get one Obsidian Statue because you can see wood is still an issue. Um, Lich, as soon as wood allows, boom, he's going to be built. And we're going to see just shortly after the G when he comes out. It should work out that pretty much around that point, as long as you tech by the G point on constructing, I'm talking about here, over here, then uh, the Lich shall come out. So we're going to return back to base. We're looking pretty battered, and it's like, oh, what do we do now? Well, I'll tell you what we do. Whilst we're waiting for everything to tick up and get the main feature of the army, the Lich, with the Orb of Corruption, we're going to send our fiends back to the Blight, so they're going to heal up quicker, and then they're also going to Burrow, so they're going to heal up quicker, and then you've got to set your Obsidian Statue onto Heal, which is going to heal them up even quicker. Ah, so we can see that the tech has gone. Don't worry if you miss it out just slightly. It's not the end of the world, okay? But you can see you need to tech by the G in constructing, the word constructing. If you do that, then your lich is going to come out. But hey, Pogody's nerfed. So, sacrificial pit has been built after your second obsidian statue. Lich is now going to pick himself up an orb of corruption and one thing I did miss out whilst all of that was happening is I actually decided to pick up a boots of speed with my death knight from the goblin merchant over here because especially in 4 versus 4 RT and to some extent 1 versus 1 I would like to try to get um, uh, sorry um, a boots of speed for my lich because it allows him to keep up with his opponents allows him to keep that orb sort of dot um, that orb debuff effect because you're always able to stay on top of your opponent that you're attacking. If you can, I don't know if I do, but swap over any items that will also benefit the Lich like Gloves of Haste or Claws of Attack. They benefit very well on the Lich. Circlets of Nobility. So you can see Sacrificial Pits going off. We're at 43 out of 50 food. Pretty much used up all the gold and wood. So this build is pretty much um, yeah, it's very tight. So fiends are coming up. Two obsidian statues. So this is pretty much your main army right here. You might not go for a sacrificial pit. But I suggest you do. Even if you're not going for frost worms. Because it's always very handy. As you can see I've built an acolyte. So that was 42 food. Up to 43 food. So you get your sacrificial pit. An acolyte is going to go into the sacrificial pit. And he's going to be that shade. So you keep an eye on your opponent. Or you can keep the acolyte on follow on your lich so you can see any invisible units around your army specifically your lich um, yeah so as I was saying um, I would suggest you get a sacrificial pit anyway which is why I pretty much go for this frostworm build 
But bear in mind, Frostworm Boneyard takes like two minutes to build, and Frost well, the, they take ages basically. It takes you three to four minutes to get a Frost Worms. So this is why I would say that you might want to differ this build ever so slightly by getting those two extra ghouls, or one ghoul at least after the initial tech, and delay the third fiend ever so slightly. That's what I would probably change ever so slightly. Just so that way, later on, like I say, you could bring that ghoul. If you're sitting at 45 food and it's like, oh, I'm ready to build a frostworm now, bring the ghoul up or have the ghoul ready for a dark ritual on your lich and get the mana. Or just kill him off or scout with him and get him killed. But preferably, don't give your opponent experience. Try to use dark ritual if you can. So, this is a very strong setup at the moment. DK lich. You can always go third hero. That's uh, an option. You don't have to go. Um, frost worms as well that would work in the favor of getting that one extra ghoul you'll be at 45 food and then you can go to 50 50 food so you might want to get yourself a dark ranger or a dreadlord as your third hero even a crypt lord it's up to you perhaps a pit lord if you're really crazy um yeah so death knight lich five fiends two statues getting ready to creep another decent red creep camp that's going to drop an awesome item you can always try your luck and creep more of these spots over here try to get more infernal stones but I'd take the safest route or route and go for this so the only problem like I say I've had with this build is not getting that fourth ghoul basically because it means that I'm having to wait a while the sacrificial pit comes up and it actually does work everything works with this build it's just I still think I probably would get that fourth guild in hindsight. Fourth gold. Did I say guild? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, you pick up the item. I got myself Kellen's Dagger of Escape, which is awesome. Not so great on a Death Knight or a Lich, but still useful for getting out of certain scenarios. But much better on a Demon Hunter or a Blade Master, for example, or a Torrent Chieftain. Anyway, you can see 220 wood. Gonna send that shade uh, acolyte that was waiting to go in the sacrificial pit. It's gonna become a shade, and that shade's gonna then rally to my lich. Meanwhile, I'm gonna get myself a boneyard, and then you're kind of at this point where you're waiting to fill up 43 out of 50 food. However, in four versus four RT, I would actually suggest this build. But if you want to get that extra goal, you can get it. I am really mixed. This is the trouble I've been having. Is I've I'm. I'm looking over all of these build orders, these replays, studying them, researching them, and there's so many variations, and really that's the only thing I would vary with this build, is just getting that one extra ghoul, but pretty much to have a solid amount of wood, and then that will allow for like a third hero, for example. However, if you are doing this Boneyard build, bear in mind that it's going to take you ages for that Frostworm to come out, but once he does come out, you're going to have a lot of gold, so you can always get yourself more cigarettes, and then go into upkeep with more statues or abominations potentially, fiends and boneyard, uh, frost worms. But one of the things I have here is you can see I've picked up a scroll of healing because in 4 vs 4 RT you, items are very important so you might have a marketplace or something like that so you've got this is one of the things I like about this build well I'll use the infernal stone just for lols is one of the things I like about this build is pretty much that you've got the flexibility. If you don't want to get this boneyard, you don't have to do it. It's there. I'm showing you almost every variation you can have. Doing a little dance at the moment, victory dance. And uh, yeah, you can spend your gold. If you're worried about having too much gold and you know not enough resources to use it on, eh, it's fine. But as you can see, the frostworm costs a lot. Once again, it takes a while to use up that last seven food. But it is worth it on a frost worm. And I pretty much stayed to this point just to prove my point that you're going to have a frost worm eventually. At what point, realistically, in the game you would have it? Because you can see the timestamp is right there. Um, again, you can spend on more healing scrolls or whatever items you want in vulnerability pots. And then afterwards, if you do do this, once that frost worm's finished, you're going to have probably enough wood just about. I think I get the creature attack. You can get that at whatever point towards late tier 3. And you'll be able to afford it wood wise. But I get that, because that's going to come out. Frostworm's going to be ready. And then you can get yourself freezing breath very shortly in a moment. Wait for it. There it is. So freezing breath's going off, and that frostworm, for example, if you go and attack, that's another benefit of having a frostworm in your team. Is say, for example, my opponent is human, they've got lots of towers. 
and you've got freeze and breath, you attack the tower in the middle and you're going to affect like towers near it. So it's very useful to have a frostworm against buildings. And also very useful to have a Frostworm just in general, because when you're fighting opponents, you slow down their units, particularly their heroes. It allows your Lich to keep up and nuke them and just basically pick off units for free, because you can catch off half their army. If they're running away and they've got like a couple of knights that are running away, that Frostworm is attacking one of those knights and there's like one or two knights stuck to that knight that are very close by. You've pretty much got yourself free, free kills. Yes, I said that. And do not spell that with a P-H-R-E-E. -E. It is my accent, in case those that couldn't work it out from before. That is why I say free the way I say it. I could say free, but it feels really wrong, and it's a lot of hard work. And I do not want to say, welcome to Warcraft, free every game. Saying it free is much easier. There, I got that off my chest. I feel better now. Right, so as you can see, the build's flexible. You can just go full on fiends if you want to. You can go fiends to destroyers. Um, you can go fiends to frostworms, as you see. You can get that extra ghoul. Like I say, after the tier 2, so in case you were curious and you've lost point, and I haven't mentioned it more than 20 times, you can get that, <laughs> that fourth ghoul after your second fiend has been built. So you basically tech and then you get a ghoul, don't you? But what you do is you actually get two ghouls and then you go back to fiends and it shouldn't really change the build order all that much really if anything it will just give you more wood and you'll feel more confident but again this is four versus four rt what am i saying you might have a shredder and then what are you going to do with your precious ghouls then eh then what well you're going to use them and kill them basically and dart ritual or whatnot and shredder rules supreme so actually yeah get a shredder instead scrap everything and get shredders so, I hope I have um, been very helpful to you in this video guide for both Ghouls and Gargs and Death Knight Lich Fiend statues and Frostworms. Lazy style. But of course I've given you directions on how you can differ these builds to deal with various scenarios, one versus one, what race you're against, four versus four, etc, etc. Alrighty, so as you notice there hasn't been an in-depth version because I decided to change things based on the previous un um, build order video guys that I've done for Human and Orc. Stay tuned for the Night Elf one, that will come up very shortly, hopefully. These guides have taken a lot out of me, They've that's pretty much why I've dragged a bit on certain videos and uploading videos a little bit is because they really take a lot of research because I want to do them right. I want to do right by you as well and not come up with some slapdash guide that's half-assed and all wrong and it's terrible. I want you to go into the game as strong as possible and this is the best way to do it. So thank you very much for watching. If this video guide has been helpful then please like the video and um, thumbs it up. It does help me out a lot so it would be very good if you could just hit that like button. I'll appreciate that. Subscribe if you want to see more and um, share the videos with your friends in case they're interested in getting good with Undead on Warcraft 3. Who isn't? Undead in balance, am I right? And you can always favourite the video if you want to watch it more than once. And uh, that'll do it. Thank you very much. This has been Witty. I'll see you later. Take care. Troll, 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 troll. I used to be a troll rag. Troll, 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 troll. Oh, cool. I'm not, I ain't got time. I was in um, one of the top guns. Do you know Method?